Harry Potter, Dimensional Wizard, a fanfiction by Lazy Sage Dow. Please support the writer. Chapter 456, Incomplete Domain Expansion. Future Edward created two methods for the magic domain, and present Edward decided to test the first one. So, he entered an enchanted room to prevent his destructive power from affecting the outside. He decided to let his inner nerd out, so he made a sign on his hand and said, Domain Expansion. World of Magic? The surrounding space changed, and Edward found himself in an empty space with nothing inside. However, there was so much mana inside this space. Moreover, each piece of mana contained his imprint, granting him absolute control of this small space. Fireball. Edward used a basic elemental spell. He looked at the fireball before him. Because of the intense concentration of mana in this space, the power of this spell was at least 20% stronger. This domain method has too many flaws. This technique is only an application of sealing magic. He used seals to create a contained space. Then, he scattered his own mana in the space while also branding the mana with his soul imprint, granting him absolute control. The intense concentration of mana in this place increases any spells used. Furthermore, the combination of the mana concentration and imprint made it very difficult for any form of energy to exist in this place. However, the flaw of this technique is that it requires too much mana. The Arcanist has to infuse too much of their mana into the sealed place, leaving little for them. Of course, all decent Arcanists have mastered some sorcerer's technique, so they can still manipulate the mana in the surrounding. And even if they did not, it is easy to accomplish since the mana has its imprints. The most important flaw is this domain is too easily destroyed, analyzed Edward. His purpose in creating the domain is to compete with the god's divine kingdom. Although a projection, the divine kingdom is extremely powerful and could easily destroy the sealing technique that is the core of this technique. Lastly, Edward hoped for Arcanist's domain to compete with the real divine kingdom. And that's not an easy task. From the information he gathered, gods are omnipotent in their divine kingdom. Anyone who invades will be immediately suppressed if not killed. A tier 9 god can seal a tier 10 god in their divine kingdom if they can cut the tier 10 god's access to their divine kingdom. One of the many aspects that made the gods one of the most powerful races is that they have absolute power in their divine kingdom. So, as long as they decide to hide there, it is thousand times more difficult to kill them. Right now, the only method he has to deal with divine kingdoms is to bomb it into smithereens from the outside with his floating city. However, he has not tested this method yet, so he is not completely sure. He feared the divine kingdom could use projection to affect the functions of the floating city. So, he needs a domain to counter this ability. Furthermore, he thought it would be cool to humiliate some snobby god by invading their divine kingdoms and killing them inside. Jujitsu sorcerers have to incorporate their curse technique into the seal space, thus creating their domain expansion, analyzed Edward. However, arcanists have many spells, and it would be meaningless to incorporate one spell into the seals. And based on future me's experiment, the seal space can fuse with seven spells. Curse energy is different from mana. The same method cannot be used to fuse spells into the domain as a curse technique. The answer future Edward derived was using the sealed space as an artifact and enchanting it. However, the problem with this method is that only seven spells can be enchanted, which is not nearly enough for the versatile fighting mode of Arcanists. Then, there is the issue that the domain would require knowledge about Artificer and enchanting before any Arcanist can use it. As such, future Edward removed this technique from the final version and left notes about it. This domain expansion is perfect for wizards or warlocks who have a few spells and master them to a terrifying level. Aren't you embarrassed? asked Morgana after seeing her boss's chinibio moment. No, replied Edward calmly. You should be. One of the qualities needed to be an emperor and a harem seeker is to be shameless, to have thick skins as the Easterners say. Well, I'm embarrassed for you. That's your problem, he replied. All right. Let's test the second method. To prove what he was saying before, he placed his hand together and said, Domain expansion, the embodiment of truth. The surroundings changed the same way as before. However, he was not in an empty space. Instead, 
Edward found himself sitting on a golden throne with a towing gate behind him. The gate contained symbols of different religions associated with knowledge and truth, like a single eye, a triangle, and the lotus. At the foot of the throne were two bookshelves full of books. Additionally, there were many books floating in the sky and others scattered on the ground. And like the previous domain, the environment was full of manna. Beautifully done, commented Edward as he observed his surroundings. His future self took into account the previous domain's flaw of incorporating many spells and found a solution. And the answer to this problem was the soul dimension. The source of all arcanist spells is their soul dimension. It is the place they construct runes or magic models when casting spells. So, future Edward created a way for arcanists to project their soul dimension into the real world, similar to divine kingdoms. This method is brilliant since arcanists also have absolute power or control in their soul dimension. Edward's domain expansion looked this way because of his soul dimension. Under its influence, the domain took the shape of something that represents his core values, a manifestation of his essence. He has a throne because he is an emperor. Of course, if he has the ambition to become an emperor, the domain expansion would also show one even if he was not. Edward loves knowledge and the pursuit of truth, hence the gate and books. Fireball. A massive fireball appeared in the large space. Upon closer observation, he saw one of the books on the sky flip its page. The boost in power is at least 40%, he uttered with shining eyes. The boost to his spell was not only the result of mana in the air, but from a mysterious power originating deep from his soul. So, the domain expansion can also mobilize some of the power of the soul flame, he analyzed. He knew the source of the extra boost and believed once he fully understood the soul flame, this boost might also increase. What do you think? He asked. The idea and execution are great, but the flaw is even worse than the first method, commented Morgana. Indeed. According to future Edward's tests, the projection of the soul dimension has no power and cannot affect the real world. So, he tried to fuse it with the seal space to create the domain. Sadly, this method failed. So, he tried many methods to sustain the projection and allow it to have an effect on the real world. In the end, he found that it could work if he created a pocket dimension and fused it with the projection. And upon success, he created this domain. However, this is the core issue. To cast this domain, an arcanist would need to be able to instantly create a pocket dimension. Unfortunately, besides Edward, there are only 50 space arcanists in the Empire with this capability. Space magic is already a rare form of magic, let alone people with great achievements capable of instantly creating pocket dimensions. Even if this domain required prep time, allowing a person to create the pocket dimension first before fusing the soul dimension's projection, not many people would meet the requirement to use it, unless they ask someone else or the Empire to create a pocket dimension for themselves. As such, although this method is brilliant, it is also not applicable. At least we know what direction to work toward, added Morgana. True. The next step to achieve a complete domain expansion is to find a way for the soul dimension projection to require no medium, just like the Divine Kingdom. Chapter 457 God Space Infiltration The next day, Edward walked out of the room and immediately saw the team waiting for him. You should have made a decision? Yes, replied Tobias. We accept your offer. After seeing how the Arcanist effortlessly decimated these top reincarnators, he knew he had no choice. So, he talked to the team and tried to convince him. Luckily, no one was stupid enough to refuse or pass on such a great opportunity. Excellent, replied Edward before taking out the cube artifacts and giving each person one. Except for one person, Kingsley. What about me? asked the Technomancer. Your situation is different, explained Edward. You don't have a soul dimension, and based on my current technology level, I cannot guarantee I can hide from the Lord God. What does that mean for me and the mission? You will be a dormant spy, explained Edward. I will erase most of your memories and save them. Then, after studying your case and gathering more technology from the Samsara Hall, I will send one of them to contact you and activate you. Edward sighed. His previous plan for Kingsley was to create an artificial soul dimension for him. Unfortunately, he was not confident in hiding it from the Samsara Hall and the purple-robed Daoist. So, 
He has to wait until he understands Kingsley's weird situation of why he is not affected by the rules of other universes. He also has to wait for the Empire's soul technology to reach the same height as the magical side. Luckily, he already has a direction of research. When he asked Kingsley why he did not have a soul, the latter once mentioned the soul was the result of quantum mechanics, the complex interactions of subatomic particles within the brain. So, he will study how to hide information in these subatomic particles and their intricate interactions, achieving the same result as the soul dimension's fourth layer. As you wish, said Kingsley calmly. According to his analysis, being a dormant spy is safer in the early years because of his innocent status or lack of information. He will be the same Kingsley before he meets the Arcanist until he awakens. So, what's next? asked Tobias after fusing with the cube. He tried to find it inside his body with his observation hockey, but it was futile. Edward did not immediately answer him. Morgana, did you get all the coordinates I asked for? I should finish calculating them tomorrow. All right. He looked at the group. I will leave this timeline tomorrow. You guys should return to God's space and wait until your next mission to contact. The purple robe Daoist should be keeping watch on you. So wait until a couple of missions before contacting me. Now, you only need to act normally. I'm nervous, said Michelle. You don't have to be, reassured Edward. He had his reasons for saying that. The artifact he gave them will be quite handy. His future self programmed it to do a variety of things, including subtly influencing their mind to be calmer in stressful situations. It will also prevent their facial expressions and body language from changing and revealing certain information. Finally, it can even blur or seal their memories of this event, making it seem as if they knew nothing. After reassuring the group, he proceeded to deal with the final preparations. He made it look as if he did light experiments on all the captured reincarnators, including Tobias' group. Then, after Morgana got the coordinates for worlds like Fate, One Piece, Jujutsu Kaisen, World of Warcraft, Underworld, Resident Evil, and Rebirth of the Eighth Circle Wizard, he left this timeline. As soon as Edward left, the Samsara Hall sent a message that the mission in this world was terminated and all reincarnators would return immediately. A white light enveloped Tobias and after opening his eyes, he immediately discovered something was wrong. After every mission, he would return to his personal room, a pocket dimension over which he has complete control. And by using samsara points, he can design the room however he wishes. He could turn it into an experiment room or a divine place like Asgard. His personal room imitated Water 7 from One Piece and was full of training places like Gravity Room. However, he was now in an all-white room with many others to be precise, with all the people who participated in the previous mission, including the Tier 8 reincarnators. He saw an enormous light that was scanning everyone's presence. So, a look of worry and fear appeared on his face. His movement was so natural that Tobias himself did not notice any anomaly. Everything proceeded normally until the scanning light reached two people. Tobias recognized these two, Tamit and Bai Li. Suddenly, Something came out of these two's bodies and appeared in this white room. Every reincarnators recognized this person as the arcanist who captured them. Then, they realized why this arcanist did nothing to them besides a few experiments. He wanted to use these top reincarnators to invade the god space. As soon as Edward's clones appeared, they did not waste time and began bombarding this place with powerful spells. So, hundreds of magic circles appeared in the sky bombarding the white space with terrible attacks. Unfortunately, a mysterious power appeared and easily dealt with his attacks. Then, a strange fluctuation emanated from the room, and the clones stopped. They discovered their mana stopped working. Anti-magic? Thought of the clones before sneering. They converted the mana inside their bodies into different energy before continuing their bombardment. The clones made it look as if their only objective was to get out of this place and access the highest secrets of the Samsara Hall. However, they could not leave the room, and the power of the Samsara Hall would use ways to deal with whatever energy they switched to. In the end, the clones acted ruthlessly and attacked the reincarnators. They had no reserve in their desire to use these people as pawns. Luckily, according to his calculations, the Samsara Hall intervened and saved these people. However, this was not Edward's final trump card. Before leaving, 
he secretly went to the reincarnator's planet and gave the clones he left in their bodies some void energy. He processed this void energy to suppress the creation characteristics and boost the destruction and space-time. So, when the clones used it, it was truly a weapon of pure chaos and destruction. Unfortunately, even this attempt failed. The power from the Samsara Hall became more intense and easily dealt with these void energies. In the end, the clones exploded themselves and erased all traces of their existence. Then, the group stayed in the White Room for more than eight hours before they were allowed to leave. Blank Realm, the space between dimensions or timeline. Fail, muttered Edward as he sensed the fate of his clones. Although he wished they could achieve something, his main objective was to use them as a distraction and remove suspicions from Tobias' group. Of course, he also used them to gather more information. During their mad bombing of the white space, the clones were also gathering data by scanning the surroundings. Well, it doesn't matter since the first step is completed, muttered Edward before returning to his timeline. Although he was only gone for a few days, it felt like years because of how much happened in such a short time. Plus, he missed Tsunade's blessed assy face. Yes, he missed her beautiful face. After returning, Edward felt peaceful. Then, he also felt a sense of repulsion from the entire universe. It seems I don't have much time left. He knew the universe will was beginning to reject his presence in this universe and wished to expel or banish him. Luckily, he still has time to do a few more things as he waits for his ride to come pick him up. Please like, share, and subscribe. Chapter 458 Reaction Samsara Hall, Core Room A handsome young man of eastern descent sat cross-legged on a cloud, dressed in ancient purple dressed with inyong patterns on his long sleeves. Below him was a picturesque view of a floating island full of rainbow, immortal-like mist, and a white crane dancing in the sky. However, the young man did not care for the beautiful scenery. For one, he is the one who created it and was used to seeing it. Secondly, he had more important things to do today. A screen floated before him, and he looked at it with worry. The purple-robed Daoist watched Edward's clones launch devastating spells on the empty room. Damn this foreign barbarian, thought the purple-robed Daoist. He was furious that someone dared to invade his territory. However, despite his anger, he had no desire to show up. So, he watched until they blew themselves up. System, is the Arcanist dead? The clones were dealt with, responded a cold and emotionless voice. Clone? What about the real body? Alive. Can't you kill him? The current world source is not enough. The purple-robed Taoist frowned, speaking of world source, how much was used to deal with this invasion? The screen changed to show him a set of data. So much? How is that possible? The enemy used void energy. Damn it, he yelled, releasing a terrible killing intent. He knew how long it would take him to make up for the world source. This loss was enough to slow down his plans by decades. Furthermore, he suffered such a tremendous loss not long ago because of a war with another god space. My luck has been poor recently, thought Purple Robe Daoist, not hiding his annoyance. He took a deep breath to calm down. You have scanned these people. Are there any anomalies? All the reincarnators have signs of someone trying to read their memories and search for their souls. Did the Arcanist succeed? Besides reincarnator 18947463, there is no evidence to show otherwise. Hernandez, muttered Purple Robe Daoist. He knew the protection measure used in Hernandez's soul was activated. However, according to the system, the Arcanist should have retained some information. Is it possible to find him? With your current security level and world source, the answer is negative. The Purple Robe Daoist tapped his fingers together. This was a habit he developed when his emotions were riled up. Are there any issues with these reincarnators? The purple robe Daoist was considering whether he should continue using these people. He had only recently chosen a new batch of reincarnators, so he did not want to eliminate so many and have to choose another. Furthermore, among these people, there were many excellent leaks, as he liked to call them. They were intelligent, driven, and capable. These people had a high mission success, thus allowing him to gather more world source. There is a 95% chance that they are clean. 
The purple-robed Daoist immediately frowned again. What about the remaining 5%? The system is currently running at its lowest level. As such, there are certain methods that cannot currently be used. Purple-robed Daoist did not like this answer. Although there was only a 5% chance, he did not want to take risks. Can you explain the missing 5%? Yes. The 5% takes into account that the Arcanist has other ways to hide from my detection. Ways like the fourth layer of the Soul Dimension, advanced use of Grand Dao runes, or blessing of Tier 14 or above powerhouses. The Purple Robe Daoist pondered. The Soul Dimension's fourth layer is knowledge accessible to Tier 11, and that's the bare minimum to begin studying it. So, he did not think this Tier 8 Arcanist could do it. Grandau runes, also called Source runes, Origin runes, and Void runes, is one of the most unique powers in existence. It's a transcendent power. The core of his system is Grandau runes. He needed so much world source because the Grandau runes of the artifact was destroyed and needed a large amount of energy to heal. However, according to his knowledge, only a few people in the Void understand and can use it. So, he did not think the Arcanist would have any connection to such a power given his current strength. So, the only problem is if he is connected to a tier 14 powerhouse. The purple robe Daoist knew there were only 16 tiers, so a tier 14 powerhouse was on the level of Primordial Chaos Saint, which is the level of Pango when he opened the prehistoric world. He is only a Deluo Golden Immortal, tier 9, and his current goal is to become a saint, which is only tier 11. Before then, he still has to become a quasi-saint, tier 10 before proving the Tao and achieving sainthood. The purple robe Taoist knew becoming a saint would not be easy even with his system, let alone tier 14. So, things would become complicated if the Arcanist was connected to one. System, what would happen if I forcefully used all your power to detect whether there was anything wrong with these reincarnators? All of the system's functions will be shut down for 10,000 years. The purple robe Taoist shook his head. This price was too great to pay. I will have to take the risk. He was not happy about this decision, but he knew it was the best choice. Keep a watch on these people and tell me if you detect anything wrong, he said. Plus, besides Bai Li, increase the mission difficulty of the other three by 70%. As you command. It seems it's time to recruit more people, muttered the purple robe Taoist. He wanted the earth to be peaceful and not be affected by the appearance of so many supernatural individuals. But now, he had no choice if he wanted to gather world source as soon as possible. One more thing, said the purple robe Taoist. Why did you suggest I don't intervene and destroy the Arcanist? Because, according to my calculations, you are not his opponent. Your interference would only lead to death or being captured. Impossible said the purple-robed Taoist in a raised voice. He's only tier 8. He did not think he would lose to a mere Tai Golden Immortal. The Arcanist can use the power of karma to boost his power to one tier higher. Furthermore, he has mastered the rules of space-time, death, destruction, and curse. Only if you use my power would you have a chance at winning. The purple-robed Taoist gritted his teeth. He did not expect the foreign barbarian to be so powerful. His immortal cultivation system can only control the power of rules in their home universe. So, he has been training his willpower to reach the standard of an archmage, legendary arcanist, or heaven-chosen cultivator. Unfortunately, this process was not easy and required too many points, even for him. I previously wanted to take things slow and not completely rely on the system. However, this experience has been a wake-up call. The purple robe Taoist decided to make full use of his golden finger or cheat item. He wanted to become as powerful as soon as possible, even if his foundation was a little shaky. Anyway, he can always make up for it with enough world source. Barbarian, this is not over. He had never suffered such a significant loss. So, he wrote this down and would have the latter pay once he became more powerful. System, find the best world for me to temper my willpower. After making a decision, he began cultivating with all his effort. Chapter 459 Last Preparations Suna, it's been so long since I met you, and I missed you greatly, said Edward with a brilliant smile as he walked into the research room. Did you miss me too? What's wrong with you? asked Tsunade, who was looking at a document from a hologram floating before her. 
I think I articulate myself well, replied Edward. How is the research? Did you finish? It's only been a few days. Edward paused as he realized he was not gone for long. However, because of how much happened, it felt like decades since he last saw her. Well, I experienced a lot. Oh, what happened? She was intrigued for him to say such a thing. So, Edward explained his short voyage to her. So, you're saying a group of godlike creatures and artifacts are acting like parasites and absorbing my world's energy? She asked with a frown. Huh? I guess I am. Tsunade had a dangerous look in her eyes. Edward gave her a look. Are you thinking of dealing with these lord gods in Godspace? I'm not that stupid. Good. Even in my world, it's impossible to deal with these people, let alone this weak universe. From my analysis, unless you reach the highest realm of Tier 16, there is no way to remove all these lord gods from a universe. So high. Yes. Well, technically, I and some other people can do it at Tier 12. However, the core issue is how to survive the revenge of these people. I see. Sunday did not have any desire to deal with any Lord God. She only felt uncomfortable that some unknown being was harming her universe. However, considering she would be leaving soon, it made no sense to care about such a thing. Did you meet another version of myself? She asked. I did. Well, how was I? No, she? The same as the Fourth Great Ninja War. The only difference was there were many reincarnators following you because of your beauty. Beauty? She asked with sarcastic eyes and tones. Yes, beauty, replied Edward with no shame. Whatever, replied Tsunade. Then, she asked with a serious face, are you leaving soon? Huh? How did you know? I have a feeling. Yes, nodded Edward. The world is rejecting me. Plus, my ride will arrive soon. Tsunade became quiet. Will I ever see this place again? I will steal this timeline and conserve it in a special dimension that trains members of my shadow squad. So, you can come to see it whenever you please. Tsunade nodded but did not say anything else. Have you thought about it? I have. And? I haven't made a decision. Is it because of my other wives? This is a factor, but not the only one. I see, nodded Edward. We will have until they arrive for you to make a decision. And how long is that? Edward did not immediately answer but called Morgana and checked. A maximum of six months and a minimum of three months. This can be said to be a long time. It can also be said to be a short time, Tsunade replied. Edward nodded before deciding to change the topic. How is your apprentice? Sakura? Well, so far, she hasn't fully displayed her chakra control talent due to the short time. However, her intelligence and learning ability has begun to shine. Edward nodded as he was not surprised. Sakura has always been the most studious and intelligent of Team 7, and such quality will allow her to thrive in the Empire, even if she chooses to become a Mana Arcanist instead of a Chakra Arcanist. Edward chatted with her for a while before heading to his research team and summoning all his clones. He then synchronized his memories with them, and, as expected, their reaction was not positive. So, we did all this research in vain, asked Clone One. Future Edward basically finished all the clones' research, making them feel their work was in vain. No, it was not in vain, quickly explained Edward. If not for your hard work, he would never finish them so quickly. Edward knew for a fact his future self would never do all the research by himself, but also use clones. Even then, it feels like we did all this work in vain uttered Clone 4. I would like to make it into the record, if I could revolt. I would, added Clone 7. Whatever, I'm only happy I don't have to work anymore, said Clone 3. The clones loved research and learning new knowledge. However, they instinctively reject doing it when their main body orders it since, most of the time, he only want to be lazy. There is no need to react like this, explained Edward. Plus, we still have some work to finish by ourselves followed by new research. I knew it, complained Clone 2. So, what is it this time? We need to continue our research on Izanagi and the creation of all things. Izanagi is a life-saving method and also a great way to learn reality-bending magic. Meanwhile, Sage of Six Paths' creation of all things is an excellent way to study the creation aspect of void energy 
thus furthering the empire's path of mastering this highest form of energy. Next is the destruction and curse rule. My future self left a little information on these two authorities, and we must continue our research, continued Edward. Then, there is the ultimate magic body. Although we cannot finish it before returning home, there is no need to stop the research. Finally, someone needs to continue the research on magic domain and the soul flame. The clones discussed amongst themselves before choosing which project to tackle. Then, Clone One asked, What about you? What are you going to do? Really? Are you not going to flirt with Tsuna? When I'm done, of course I will, replied Edward, making the clones roll their eyes before leaving. While alone, Edward said, Morgana, we need to update some protocols and plan ahead. Oh, what do you have in mind? Firstly, we need a backup world gate in case a similar accident occurs. There was a backup in more than one, but I used them when escaping from the floating city. I'm aware. I'm referring to a world gate stored in the soul dimension as a backup vehicle. We tried before to place the world gate in the soul dimension. However, the spatial temporal field emanated from it would cause catastrophic damage to the place, even if sealed. However, the issue might be dealt with if we placed it in the fourth layer. That was my exact thinking, nodded Edward. What else? The automatic repair system of the floating city needs to be upgraded, continued Edward. The city will fix itself after damage, but Edward felt the process was too slow. It's because of this that he had to wait for a ride from him. The current technology is the limit we have, added Morgana. It used to be, countered Edward. But now, we have more knowledge and can upgrade it. Do you want to use void energy? asked Morgana. Correct. We now have more control over the different characteristics of void energy. We will place a system in the city to use the space-time characteristic to revert the city to its former self after destruction. We can also add the use of the creation characteristic to recreate the city to the desired shape and fix it. Morgana took a moment to do some calculations. It's possible. The best idea would be to use a Zanaji to instantly reverse the damage. Unfortunately. True, nodded Edward. Lastly, we need a better homing system. The floating city is designed to return to him if he is separated. But Edward felt the current system was not up to the level he would like. Any ideas? She asked. None so far, but we can begin the preparatory work on it. As you wish. He then dismissed her before continuing with his own thing. Chapter 460 Tier 8 Soul Limit Wait, I do have an idea, suddenly said Edward. Oh, I'm all ears, replied Morgana who manifested a little writing pad in her hands along with a pencil. We can use our new understanding of karma, explained Edward. I should be karmically linked to the city. We can use this link as a homing device. Once needed, the floating city only needs to use this link to rush to my destination. That's not a bad idea, nodded Morgana. In that case, I'll leave things to you. If you need help, you can contact Hermione. She should be able to provide you with enough help given her research in karma and cause and effect. No problem. How is the research progress on Project ST-897? This project involved creating a ship that could travel the Omniverse using only technology and no magic. Before, Edward was not in a hurry since he knew the Empire's pure science and technology were not on the same level as its magical sides. However, after proving the existence of the pure materialist world, his paranoia began to act again. He had started to plan how to escape such a universe, and the best way was to create a ship and return home. However, without magic or any supernatural aspect, it would be impossible for Edward to create an omniversal travel ship. There are some issues, explained Morgana. The main engine and other systems are proceeding smoothly. After digesting the technology from Kingsley, the automaton race, and the other reincarnators, it won't be a problem to complete it. So, what is the issue? The ship's material, replied Morgana. The magician intervenes with the ship's electromagnetism and the quantum field. And all other metals cannot survive the void. Edward frowned. The floating city's defense against the immense void energy in the endless void consists of the void shield and the fact the entire city is made up of a special metal called magician. The Void Shield cannot completely isolate the power from the Void Energy, so the Magician, 
which Edward created to have a high resistance to the destructive abilities of void energy, will take its role. So, just like how technology products cannot function properly at Hogwarts, it's impossible to create a pure technology ship using magicium. We need a new metal. Yes, Captain Obvious. Edward ignored her. How are things proceeding with finding a replacement? Not very well, replied Morgana. The team asked Her Highness Rowena to create a special medal for them using void energy, but she has yet to succeed. Given our recent breakthrough, can you calculate the chances of her succeeding? After coming to this place, he made many breakthroughs, pushing the Empire's technological tree to a higher level. And one of those discoveries involved a higher understanding and usage of void energy. According to my simulation, her chances are 23.45%. So low? Void energy is still the highest form of energy we have encountered. And as you know, we have barely scratched its surface. True, nodded Edward before a watch appeared in his hand, making Morgana squint her little eyes. Do you think the watch from the Samsara Hall is the answer to our problem? Yes, replied Edward. I believe this watch is either made from void energy or origin runes. If we can crack the slightest of its technology, our problem will be solved. In that case, I will put it on the list of priorities. All right. Morgana disappeared while Edward continued his work. He closed his eyes to review the knowledge his future self created about the mana circles. He previously believed the mana circles were a different system and unique enough that they could not be perfectly fused with his arcane system. However, he was wrong. Future Edward found a way to fuse them. After reading, he activated the enchantments in the room that converted other energy into mana. Edward did not immediately absorb it, but divided the mana into particles. Then, he created the first four circles. He controlled them to enter one of his two magic cores, the original one or the one in his heart. His philosopher's stone or ether core looked like a humongous purple ball, but he did not focus on this. Edward proceeded to fuse the four circles with his ether core. Then, he found the core became more fluid-like instead of a rigid solid shape. A super-solid state, thought Edward. Super-solid is a state of matter that combines the characteristics of a solid and a superfluid. Edward continued his work. He created the following four mana circles and fused them with his second ether core in his soul dimension. A tier 5. Arcanist creates their first ether core in the magic core in their hearts. And at tier 7, they can store mana in their soul dimension and make the second core. After turning his second core into a super solid state, Edward used his future self technique to have both cores resonate with each other. Bang! Edward felt his mind refreshed, as if he had finished a deep state of meditation. An energy wave rushed throughout his body, increasing his physical prowess by a few percent. Finally, he even felt his soul had risen by a small amount. Unfortunately, he was now at the peak of Tier 8 and could not increase his soul strength unless he broke the soul limit. Booze, I have good news, said Morgana, who suddenly appeared. What is it? I detected a change in your soul flame. What happened? The purple color intensified by 2.45%, explained Morgana. Does that mean? Yes. Creating the super solid ether core can raise the quality of a person's soul flame, nodded the little elf. Let's go verify it. Do we have any more Tier 8 clones? No, only Tier 6. That will do. The two immediately began their work. They quickly trained a few Tier 7 and 8 clones for their experiments. Then, they controlled the clones to create the super solid ether core while observing the changes in their soul flame. Excellent, commented Edward as he gazed at the body on his table. The super solid ether core is a way to break the soul limit between tier 7 and 8. Edward was slightly worried about this issue. In the Empire, his royal family could become tier 8 because there was enough divine energy to help them. And after killing Guznad, there should be more. However, he was worried other arcanists would begin to cause trouble after being stuck in tier 7 while the royal family could reach tier 8. Edward was prepared to sell some divine energy to the public even though he did not want to maintain peace. However, now, he had a more universal way to achieve Tier 8. Technically speaking, this method pushed the soul limit to a higher tier, added Morgan, and Edward agreed. He has not entirely solved the issue of soul limit. 
otherwise, he would have already reached Tier 9. The soul limit is a problem plaguing humans and countless species for eons. How could it easily be solved? The soul limit of most species is Tier 6, meaning it's virtually impossible to reach higher levels, unless they implant powerful bloodlines or become gods. Bloodlines with higher soul limits are rare, and those races are extremely powerful, making them difficult to acquire. So, the path of godhood is the easiest choice. Morgana nodded. What is the reason for this change? Is it because of the Trinity theory? Trinity theory, also called the essence, chi, and spirit theory. According to Eastern magic, the body is composed of three things, essence, chi, and spirit. Essences refer to the body, spirit to the soul, and chi to mana or other forms of energy in the body. The theory states all these three are connected. Thus, the influence of one affects the other. Based on the fact that both my body and soul were strengthened, it's the only explanation. Edward analyzed the data and stored it. All right, let's go test the power of this new core, added Edward before disappearing from the lab. Meanwhile, Morgana had to order the cleaning golems to clean up the laboratory. Chapter 461 Super Solid Ether Core Boom! A magic circle appeared before Edward releasing a devastating blow that destroyed dozens of star systems. Luckily, he chose one with no life, or this would be a civilization catastrophe for the inhabitants of this star cluster. Edward continued to cast powerful spells while Morgana recorded the data. Finally, after more than six hours, he finished with a satisfied grin on his face. How is it? With the super-solid ether core, the Empire's Arcanist's strength will increase between three to five times. The tier system is basic. It is based on how much destructive or defensive power a person has. So, for Edward's universe, the requirement for tier 8 is to have the power to destroy a star system composed of at least nine planets the size of Earth and one star the size of the Sun, or survive the explosion or destruction of a star system of that level. However, despite how basic the system was, there were some nuances that dictated the strength of each individual. For example, the arcane system created by Edward made it easier and faster for people to reach higher tiers, but also was more potent on average. And the main reason for that was that arcanists have higher destructive capabilities using the same amount of energy. For example, let's say that the amount of mana needed to destroy a planet was one unit. The Empire's arcanists can use one unit of mana to destroy two to five stars. The main reason is their crystal or solid mana and their purified purple mana. In general, the mana they used is of higher essence or quality. Their mana is not even mana anymore and can be called ether, which is a higher form of energy close to if not on par with void energy. And now, the super solid state of the ether core made them even more powerful. Using one unit of mana, Arcanists will be able to destroy five to ten planets. This discovery will significantly help us in our battle against the gods, commented Edward. The divine mercenary system is one of the ways the gods dealt with magic civilizations. They lured powerful casters to serve them with the promise of increasing their mana, purifying their mana, increasing their soul limit, and granting knowledge. However, the empire won't have much trouble since most of these temptations are useless. The empire's arcanists will be the most powerful class of casters, envied and sought after by many. And Edward has already planned to use this fact to lure magic civilizations who do not want to be servants to the gods. The more important thing is the development of our energy technology, commented Morgana. The ether core is the core of the empire's technology tree. And every tiny progress equates to great change in the entire empire. After coming to this world, Edward acquired the mana sage mode, drastically increasing his understanding and energy use. Subsequently, he got his hands on the Fate Universe's magic circuit, which also further enhanced his energy control. Finally, he studied Titan's magic weapon, which also involved brilliant use of energy. Adding this new super-solid ether core, the Empire's energy technology will take a big leap. Yes, you need to calculate the remaining two mana circles so we can update the floating city's ether core, added Edward. Upon success, we might be able to push the city to the limit of Tier 10. I will add this feature for the 3.0 version. Edward nodded before returning to the ninja world and continuing his training. 
He entered the second layer of his soul dimension and placed a few sealing spells in all four directions. Then, he gathered the mana from the enchantments before condensing them into a crystal shape and purifying them into purple. The process was fast, smooth, and without any hindrance. Once the core formed, he condensed the eight mana circles before fusing them with the ether core. He watched how the state of the core changed from a normal solid to a super solid, containing the properties of both solid and liquid. Once the process finished, Edward gathered more mana to expand the size of the core. This core in the second layer served as the second mana pool for Edward, so the final size was countless times larger than the one in the first layer. After all, the first layer's ether core and the one in his magic core combined together to form his tier 8 strength. So, after the second layer's core reached the pinnacle of tier 8 mana, he stopped before checking his body. Success, he muttered after not feeling any symptoms. The idea of sealing the soul dimension's second layer and creating another ether core was not new. Edward had previously experimented on this subject as a way to have an extra mana pool. However, his previous efforts failed. Even after sealing the place, there were consequences for creating a third ether core. He would often have headaches, he had difficulty concentrating or controlling his soul strength. To solve this problem, Edward tried to create an ether lake in the second layer. He tried using liquid mana instead of crystal mana. Unfortunately, the amount of liquefied mana required to become tier 8 was outrageous, so he wanted a better solution. Because of these facts, Edward became excited after discovering the mana circles. The micro nature made him believe they would place no burden on the soul dimension, and thus could be used to acquire additional mana pools. But now, he found a solution that is the best of two worlds. The super solid ether core had the properties of liquid mana and placed less burden on the soul dimension. Meanwhile, it did not require as much mana to reach the tier 8 quantity. And, if this chapter tells different information from the previous chapter called Mana Circle was because someone in my Discord pointed out a plot hole, so I'm trying to correct or explain it. After creating his second mana pool, Edward checked his body. As long as I remove the seal, I can access a second mana pool. A caster's worst nightmare is the lack of mana. So, having ways to regenerate mana or have extra mana pools is a common tactic of most casters' path, except for sorcerers. However, I should consider the possibility of someone removing the seals, muttered Edward with a frown. If that were to happen, it would be like fusing with another tier 8 clone of himself. And the result of such a thing for him, who has reached the limit of tier 8, would be an explosion because his body and soul cannot bear or control such a large quantity of mana. Let's quadruple reinforce the seal. Then, add another sealing artifact as a fail-safe. Finally, Morgana will be in charge of controlling the second mana pool in case something happens to the seal. After making preparations, Edward nodded in satisfaction. Then, he proceeded to create two more super solid ether cores in the third and fourth layers of the soul dimension. Even I feel the pressure on my dimension, commented Edward before drinking a few potions to reinforce the dimension. Then, he proceeded to the last step. He removed his robe and placed his hand on his belly button. Then, a seal tattoo similar to Naruto's appeared. He closed his eyes to see another space inside his body. Edward focused and created another ether core and placed it inside the seal. This world's eight trigram sealing jutsus has many uses, muttered Edward. Chapter 462 New Rules The sealing jutsus of this world has many applications. When he visited the Mummy for Universe, he kidnapped the protagonist named Nick who had a unique body granted to him by Yahweh. This body allowed Nick to seal weak gods and use their power for themselves. Over the years, Edward managed to recreate some of the abilities of that unique physique. And now, with this world's sealing technique, he can do even more. It's not impossible for him to create a unique class of arcanists that seals powerful entities in their bodies and draws their power. These entities can be gods, demons, abyss devils, immortal cultivators, Buddhas, and so on. Huh, I can't take off a good name for this profession, muttered Edward. Should I just call them Archange and Churiki? That's a terrible name, said Morgana. Do you have any better ideas? How about Divine Vessel Arcanists? They are indeed vessels for these beings, so it's a great name, nodded Edward. However, 
I will reject it just because of your previous rudeness. Are you going to be this petty? I am, replied Edward before ignoring her. He took a moment to improve this new profession. He can combine Hermione's summoning talent to create a unique summoning ritual for the Divine Vessel Arcanists. The ritual would allow them to summon the best creature suitable for their talent, personality, and elemental affinity. These summonses would be from different planes, dimensions, and even parallel timelines. Edward modified the ritual accordingly to increase the scope. Then, he added preventive measures in case someone summoned something they should not or were incapable of controlling. Additionally, summons can take two paths. The first one is like Naruto, where they became partners with their summons, or the second, where they essentially enslave the latter. This profession seems a little dangerous, commented Morgana after seeing the final result. You're correct. So, let's make it into law that tier 4 or above summons need to be supervised by the Empire. Moreover, all summons will take place in a pocket dimension that is prepared to self-destruct at any time. I'm not just referring to this. This profession could make us the enemy of all races in the universe. I understand your concern, nodded Edward. No race would accept a magic system that involved hunting and taking them into captivity. This profession will not become too popular because of the major flaw that people will lose most of their powers if their summons is dead or removed from their bodies. Plus, we can encourage people to form a contract or bond with their contract instead of forcing them, unless dealing with evil or chaotic creatures. Edward knew the true purpose of this system was to give Arcanists another method of survival and increase their strength. Most of them will probably be interested in creatures or entities with unique abilities. Then, they will choose to seal them in their bodies or other magic artifacts to use their strength or unique abilities. That's fine. We can encourage people to hunt their summons instead. This is a safer way. Morgana worried about some powerful entities using this opportunity to find their plane and invade. Luckily, her boss has always been a steady type of person, always considering and preparing for the worst-case situation. We can also ask the Divine Vessel Arcanists to make oaths not to abuse this system, making enemies all over the universe and other planes, added Morgana, and Edward nodded with her. The two continued their conversation to further refine this system. They decided to choose another plane where all the Divine Vessels Arcanists to make their summons. As such, in case something happens, the Empire will have time to react and even abandon that plane if necessary. Then, Edward went to the last thing he was interested in this universe, the Pure Land. This place is essentially the afterlife of the Naruto universe. Back home, Edward discovered the Earth was one of the few if not the only, place in the universe with its own independent underworld. And after defeating Herpo, he took control of this place. At least, he tried to. Unfortunately, so far, things have been proceeding slowly. His plan is for Bellatrix to master death rules and have complete control of the underworld. In the future, the Empire's citizens will not have to worry about their afterlife. They don't have to worry about some unknown god or entity having control of their souls. Furthermore, with control of the underworld, the Empire can quickly become a civilization where death is no longer a mystery but also meaningless. Unfortunately, the process is not smooth. Bellatrix is far away from controlling or mastering death rules. Furthermore, she has been busy dealing with the undead during the war. Finally, before Edward left, he did not completely eradicate Herpo's influence or power in the underworld. So, he wanted to visit the Pure Land to see if he could learn and benefit from it. When he leaves this place, he will also take it away. After returning home, Edward has not decided whether to fuse it with the Underworld or leave it as a separate thing. He took one step and teleported to the Pure Land. No one detected his arrival as he floated in the air. He gazed at this near-infinite space and could see endless souls. Edward discovered this place was divided into three areas, Purgatory, Hell, Reincarnation Hall, and Pure Land. Purgatory is where people with regrets were waiting for someone in the land of the living. From his memory, he remembered Kakashi's father staying in this place before he met his son. Hell is where evil individuals pay for their crimes. The Reincarnation Hall is the place where people who want a chance at a second life will go. However, they won't remember the memories of their past life. Edward discovered there were not many people in this area. Most people stayed in the Pure Land. 
a place where their souls could remain happy and free from worries for the rest of eternity. Edward focused on a special creature in this place, the Shinigami. He discovered they had a leader, the Shinigami King. Tier 8? This Shinigami King has reached the pinnacle of this world, thought Edward before continuing studying this place. He spent the next few days secretly studying every inch of this place. Although I knew this would be the case, I'm still a little disappointed, muttered Edward. He thought this place could help him permanently deal with the soul limit. I may have to go to the MCU and bleach to solve this issue. He shook his head as his study was not futile. He closed his eyes as he remembered numerous pieces of knowledge in his mind. He started from his knowledge of biology, anatomy, the life code, the soul, reincarnation spells, and resurrecting spells. Edward entered a deep state of meditation as he overviewed his overwhelming knowledge. Then, a strange fluctuation emanated from his body. Success, he thought as he opened his eyes with a smile. Then, two chains appeared in his hand. Life and soul authority. And, if you have a better name suggestion than Divine Vessel Arcanist, I'm open to suggestions. I think this name is good, but you guys might have a better one. Chapter 463, Domain Battle. Edward was happy with the appearance of these two rules. Rules or authorities prove that his understanding of certain types of magic has reached the pinnacle. So, he will always be happy for the manifestation of one. The more, the merrier. Of course, he also understood he had limits and could not know and control all known rules. And even if he could, it was not worth the effort. So, he was prepared to major in a few while the others would be used in an emergency or situation that needed them. Huh, muttered Edward as he looked in the distance. The fluctuation of his rules alerted the Shinigami king, allowing the latter to detect his existence. He immediately went on the offensive and used a law spell, a spell containing the power of rules or authority. Hand of Death A towering black hand descended from the sky, heading straight for the Shinigami king, who looked like the creature summoned when using the dead demon consuming seal. The only difference was his size, which was at least 15 meters tall, and the weird crown with the character for Yama engraved in it. In the past few days, this Shinigami king was the only thing I could not completely figure out, thought Edward as he watched his attack heading for the opponent. The only thing I know about him is that he uses chakra. In fact, Edward could tell the entire Pure Land was composed of well-crafted and controlled chakra, which further inspired Edward's understanding of the space-time rule. The Shinigami king waved his hand, and Edward's attack disintegrated, and he did it effortlessly. Death rule, analyzed Edward. Moreover, the entire Pure Land is like his domain, boosting his strength. Law spell, Wail of death. The head of a banshee appeared before screaming. Her voice created a sonic wave with the power to bring death to all the souls in its path. However, the Shinigami King's response was the same. As he slowly moved forward, he waved his hand, and Edward's attack disappeared. This person's application of death rule is above even me, analyzed Edward. However, he did not stop attacking since this was a perfect learning opportunity. However, after another attack, he suddenly felt he could no longer use his death rules. It was like someone stripped him of the right to use this authority. Edward remained calm as he analyzed the situation. My death rule is utterly useless while the power of the other ones has drastically decreased. His eyes became brighter as he found another application for his magic domain. Morgana, according to your calculations, what is the best way to deal with his domain? You can use intense energy fluctuation to reduce its effect. However, your mana and soul strength are also suppressed, so you need to tap into your reserved mana pools. And the second and most efficient way is also to use your magic domain. This situation is a perfect time for field testing. Edward agreed, so he waited until the king was closer. Then, he used the second domain by combining his soul dimension with an instantly created pocket dimension. However, something odd occurred. His pocket dimension did not envelop the Shinigami king. Instead, the space of the pure land blocked the creation of his dimension. So, the situation became odd. One side was Edward's domain, where he sat on his throne with the books, while the other side was the king and the pure land. Is this the result of two domains clashing? Edward observed the situation, 
while also stabilizing the pocket dimension. The situation was an anomaly, and he needed to use his space rules to prevent the domain from crashing. Furthermore, he also detected the size of his domain was rapidly shrinking by the pure land. As expected, this domain is unstable and requires too much reliance on space magic, commented Edward. Regardless, he saw this situation as an opportunity to gather more data before perfecting it. However, the Shinigami King was not playing around. He only wanted to deal with this powerful invader. He waved his hand to instantly create a legion of dead souls. Under his command, they rushed into Edward's domain. He observed this army and noticed they paused for a moment after entering. Then, they continued their charge. With a single thought, they disappeared from this world. Then, Edward used the same spell as the king. He watched as his army entered the latter's enemy. There is a significant difference, he analyzed. He saw his troops instantly annihilated after entering the enemy's territory. The Shinigami king's control over his domain is miles ahead of him. His domain followed his will. It instinctively rejects any power that does not belong to him. Furthermore, it is very aggressive. Edward could tell the latter's domain acted as if it was alive and had a will of its own. So, he closed his eyes, ignoring that his domain was rapidly shrinking. He followed his new discovery and instilled his will into this domain. The will to reject any foreign powers and anything that wished to harm him. Bang! Edward's domain vibrated and a mysterious change seemed to have occurred. The Shinigami king sensed something and acted. He raised his hand to create a black cloud of death powers. However, things are different now. As soon as the cloud reached Edward's side, his domain automatically extinguished it. The king acted swiftly and summoned a black scepter. A terrifying wave of chakra emanated from its body as he slammed the staff on the floor, generating a mighty energy wave. In an instant, Edward's domain shrunk by more than 20%. The integrity of the domain's space is too fragile, analyzed Edward calmly. It would be best if it could be like a mini-universe that is not easily destroyed. Edward realized another flaw of the domain. And the way to deal with this issue is to reinforce the space with enchantments. And the second is to essentially turn the domain into a mini-universe or world. The God's Divine Kingdom is this way, so... Arcanists can follow this step. Edward wanted the domain to not rely on outside aids or resources. It should be a magical ability usable by all Arcanists. However, he realized he was asking too much. Even the kingdoms of the gods require numerous resources to create. And if Arcanists wish to use their domain to compete with the Divine Kingdom, they will also need to make an effort. So, I need to create special artifacts that Arcanists can fuse with their domain to turn them into small universes. Edward suddenly thought of the Space Gem from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I can study the gem and recreate it. This would be the best thing to stabilize the domain. Other options he could think of are Void Energy or the Space Chamber, which is a divine spark. The Space Chamber is a unique thing and cannot be used. Meanwhile, I feel that Void Energy is still too dangerous. So, Let's study the space chamber first to create something from it. Then, in my next voyage, I will go to the MCU and study the Infinity Stones. All these thoughts flashed into Edward's mind as his domain was rapidly annihilated. Then, he finally focused on the battle. A staff appeared in his hand and activated his space-time rule to enchant the space of the domain. Finally, he blessed the domain with all his rules. Immediately afterward, he felt the domain underwent another change. It became more stable, his power was easier to use, and the requirement for mana drastically decreased. Interesting changes. Morgana, are you getting all this data? You should know the answer without asking. I'm just checking if you're not lazy. The little elf ignored him. Boom! Edward's domain expanded and enveloped the Shinigami King before the latter could respond. Is this the power of multiple rules? thought Edward. Chapter 464 Choice Edward understood the Shinigami King was powerful for two reasons. He had a great understanding and control of death rules, and his domain was more perfect compared to his. The Shinigami King can more effortlessly use his rules through the domain. So, he learned from the latter and blessed his domains with his space-time, death, life, curse, 
and soul rules. Edward used numbers to his advantage as he surrounded the king. And as expected, the Shinigami was rendered useless after being surrounded by this domain. He could no longer use his death rules, and the chakra in his body was also sealed. Edward observed the Shinigami king to be a soul type of life form. However, even the latter's soul strength was rendered useless by the domain. Is this what it feels like to be under the god's divine kingdom? Thought Edward, gazing at the ugly expression of the king. He could tell the latter was trying everything possible to mobilize his power. According to the previous strategy, I should use violent energy outbursts to remove the restrictions when dealing with the divine kingdom's projection. However, based on the Shinigami king's reaction, this method might be useless. Morgana, what do you have to say for yourself? This strategy was based on her simulation. First of all, we have never faced a divine kingdom projection, so most of our data is purely theoretical. Secondly, the conclusion is still valid. Mana is different from chakra, especially our mana that has sublimated into ether. I see. When we go back, we need to find ways to finish Project False God. Project False God is a research group led by Edward to create a false god using clones. One clone is chosen as the god and trained until tier 6. Then, he manufactures billions of clones and implants memories of worshipping the tier 6 clones. Then, the tier 6 clone embarks on the path of godhood. It will gather faith from the billions of clones to cast its divine body and soul, divine spark that contains its chosen, authority. The divine flame that purifies faith and creates divine energy. However, this god created in this project is not false because it was artificially created. It is a false god because it does not have a divine kingdom full of believers. Over the years, by studying Herpo, or the death god, set from the mummy four worlds, and the gods from Konosuba, Edward has managed to deduce the path of godhood to this level. Unfortunately, he is stuck in the phase of the divine kingdom. Herpo did not have a kingdom and used the underworld. Meanwhile, Set and the Konosuba gods live in a place different from divine kingdoms. Their godly abodes were habited by many gods and were similar to the residents of a Pathian. Lastly, the knowledge of the divine kingdom is highly guarded in the Harry Potter universe. These tier 10 gods did it on purpose so they could use this knowledge to force false gods to become their subordinates. This act created a vicious hierarchy. Most races have a soul limit and can no longer reach higher tiers. So, they embark on the path of faith. However, these people will soon discover that they need to rely on higher tier gods to get the knowledge they want. And oftentimes, they have to sell themselves into servitude to get such knowledge. There are five methods to accelerate the progress, said Morgana. The Akashic Record, ask Merlin, try your luck in the multiverse, try cheating again, and lastly, kill a god and get the information. The Akashic Record is too expensive, replied Edward. Merlin will most likely tell me not to bother him for such a trivial matter. However, there is also a chance he might just give it to me. The multiverse is out of the question. The last time when creating the Tier 10 floating city, the rabid plundering alerted some entity, so it's dangerous to return there now. In the current situation, I cannot mess with the space-time continuum, so cheating is out of the equation. So. Our best choice is to kill Guznad and search his soul for information. I will label it as a priority. Edward nodded before continuing to observe the Shinigami king. After a few tests, he concluded the king was similar to the ancient gods in his universe who was born with E authority. The purpose of the Shinigami is nothing more than to overview the afterlife, so the universe will create it and give it access to the death authority. Edward became interested in whether this pure land served as the afterlife only for the ninja planet or for the entire world. After a little research, he discovered each galaxy contained one pure land controlled by a Shinigami king. However, not all of them were tier 8. So, Edward placed them on the list of things to plunder. Well, he was planning on stealing the entire timeline anyway. Edward quickly finished his work here after capturing the Shinigami king. Then, he left as he had to meet the ambassadors from the Sage Clan and the Chakra Race. The group wanted to experience the culture of the Empire before deciding whether to surrender or not. And under Edward's guidance and display of might, most decided to surrender. However, the Sage Clan was composed of many different species, 
making their faction very diverse and also more challenging to unite, especially for such an occasion. Edward did not want to waste time, so he welcomed the people who surrendered and used force on those who resisted. Unfortunately, a few people would rather die than surrender, even after their defeat. So, he had to remove these unstable factors. Meanwhile, the automatons continued their missions to plunder resources in other timelines. A few days later, Edward went to see Tsunade. So, why did you call me? Did you make a decision? Asked Edward as he entered the former Hokage's room and sat opposite her. Yes. Oh, he replied, slightly flustered. Based on his analysis, things could go either way. No, the odds were not in his favor. Tsunade paused, trying to see his reactions or any emotions of worry and such. Unfortunately, she was disappointed as he looked as usual. She then understood this man in front of her was an emperor, so knowing how to hide his emotions and thoughts was necessary for any capable ruler. I decided to accept your offer, said Tsunade calmly. Really? I have to say I'm surprised, replied Edward. He knew Tsunade had feelings for him, but he also knew this was not enough for her to get into a relationship with her. After all, he had too many things she found unacceptable. Things like his gray morality or his multiple wives. Can I ask why? Did you really fall for my unparalleled charm? You think too much, said Tsunade, rolling her eyes. I think it would benefit the shinobi world if I had the status of a queen. So, it's a marriage of alliance? I can accept that. His marriage with Wiz was of similar nature as one of the main reasons he accepted was to use her status as an undead to facilitate the welcoming of the undead as citizens of the empire. And now, Tsunade wanted to do something similar for the shinobi of this world. We are immortal, so we can have time to get to know each other and develop feelings, said Edward, who paused briefly. Since our marriage is of this nature, we will need to have a grand wedding broadcast to all the Empire's territory. The media department will work overtime to portray you in the ninjas in a positive light, in a way that you will benefit the Empire. Tsunade frowned as she felt this would be a hassle. However, since she wanted a better future and status for the ninjas, it was necessary. Will I have any official power? asked Tsunade. You can be in charge of the medical department. However, you should understand that the current medical ninjutsu is nothing in the empire. If you want to make a difference and hold such power, you need to innovate. No problem. Tsunade felt this position was perfect for her. Furthermore, she did not fear any challenge. As long as she absorbs the empire's knowledge, she believes she can either elevate medical ninjutsus to new heights or innovate the magic healing department of the Empire. Chapter 465 Shadow Squad I'm glad you're confident, said Edward. However, you should not underestimate the difficulty ahead of you. The Empire has now controlled over 100 star systems, thousands of planets, and hundreds of them with life. Currently, the population is more than 100 trillion. So, being the head of any department is not a simple thing because of how fierce the competition is. As such, although I have the power to appoint you to that position, whether you can control such power is another thing entirely. Plus, if you're truly terrible at your job, according to the Empire's rules, the people have the right to depose you. I understand, nodded Tsunade after pausing for a few seconds. She understood the concept that only the best person is required for certain positions, similar to the Hokage position. So, she decided to have a better mindset and not underestimate the value of the opportunity granted to her. I will take this time to prepare. That's good. Edward chatted with her, giving her some suggestions. For example, what people she can trust, people she woe to ensure her position, and who her competitors are. Subsequently, he also told her to train her own people or team. For example, her genius apprentice Sakura. If trained properly in the medical field, she can be a great boost for her. Edward also recommended she use a similar method as him and teach talented children at Hogwarts and Bones Advanced Magic School. These talented individuals can become her greatest support for her future position. Finally, he left and went to another pocket dimension in his laboratory. As soon as he arrived, someone appeared before him. Your Majesty. Itachi, how are things going? The initial training is completed. However, I won't know the result until we complete our first mission. Before leaving, 
Edward made Itachi the deputy director of his Shadow Squad to lead an elite group of spies and assassins for the Empire. According to his previous plan, he wanted to wait until he returned home to begin training this squad. However, Itachi insisted and even asked him to use time acceleration and time dilation to begin the training. Edward understood the latter wanted to use this opportunity to ensure that the ninjas took the majority of places in this new squad. This method is the way Itachi thought of ensuring the status of the ninjas after returning to the Empire. Additionally, this method will also allow him to have as much power as possible before the commander arrives. After all, Itachi did not know what kind of person this commander was, and if they would forcibly take over all his power and make him a figurehead. But now, he has complete control of the Shadow Squad, and all its members are of the same origin as him. In the future, he would ensure the ninjas dominate the Shadow Squad. As such, he would not have to worry about the future commander. Itachi understood that if the situation were normal, his actions would create a gap between him toward his master, his majesty. After all, his actions could be interpreted as him trying to secretly build power. However, Itachi knew the situation was not a problem since he handed his soul to the emperor and was utterly loyal. As for the future commander and their relationship with the emperor, Itachi knew Edward was the kind of person who valued talented and capable people. So, he knew Edward would view his actions as a test for the future commander. If the commander cannot find ways to control the Shadow Squad and take back power, then it will only show that they were not capable and not the person for this job. Show me, said Edward, and Itachi led him to the squad. You two are here too, said Edward after seeing Kakashi and Jiraiya. I could understand Kakashi's presence, but why are you here, pervy sage? Shouldn't you be peeping somewhere? Jiraiya laughed embarrassedly. Well, peeping is a crime. And with your strength, it's easy to be captured by the golems. Jiraiya coughed lightly to hide his red face. He remembered some not-so-pleasant memories. If not for Tsunade's interference, he should have spent a few days in a cell and paid a hefty price. I asked them to help develop the training session for the squad, explained Itachi, and Edward nodded. He followed the group as he saw approximately 10,000 ninjas, all well-trained in shadow, space, invisible, chameleon, illusion, spiritual magic, and ninjutsu. Of course, they are also trained in assassination and information gathering and analysis. I have combined the inheritance of all villages with training this squad, explained Itachi before pointing at another group. We have begun studying an anti-divination sealing jutsus. Unfortunately, the progress is slow. Edward calmly watched the training of these ninjas, including some real-life stimulation done via virtual reality. Your Majesty, what do you think? Itachi was slightly nervous. So far, there is no problem besides the lack of achievements. But, but, the number is too small, said Edward. Your mission will be spread across the entire galaxy. Once the war with Guznad is over, you will be sent to the entire universe across multiple planes and even parallel timelines. Itachi was quiet. This fact was one of the fundamental flaws of his plan. The ninja's population was too small. There are less than 500 million people on the entire planet, and the number of ninjas is not even 1% of that number. And his squad also requires elites. Your Majesty, I ask you to let me choose from the people the automatons brought back, said Itachi. Edward frowned after hearing this. He sent the automatons to the multiverse to plunder resources, including people. However, a while ago, he received some bad news. The people discovered were variants of the people of this timeline. In other words, the population discovered was copies of the people of the ninja planet, with only a few small differences. Furthermore, the situation is the same for humans living in other galaxies. So, Edward did not want to bring these people back to prevent dealing with variants. It would make things too complicated and could easily reveal the fact that the Empire mastered multiverse technology. After pondering for a while, Edward rejected Itachi's proposal and explained why. I know what you're thinking, added Edward before Itachi spoke. We could change their faces or modify their minds to make them think they were clones. However, the risks were not worth it. If the news that the Empire has any connection to the multiverse, we will become the enemy of all factions in the universe. The multiverse is the key for these Tier 10 gods to reach Tier 11. So, 
As long as there is the slightest news, they would all become mad to get their hands on it. I understand, said Itachi, not hiding his disappointment. Your squad will incorporate the Metamorphmagus Agency. The Empire's most elite spy agencies are composed of Metamorphmagus, capable of disguising as any race or species in the universe. They are scattered all over the universe, dormant as they slowly form a terrifying force. Unfortunately, they are too young and have not shown their capabilities yet. As you wish. Is there anything else? Yes. Orochimaru designed a new type of golem. I would like to use them. Itachi wanted to reduce the casualties of his squad, so he thought of creating a disposable death squad that could be used as discarded pawns during dangerous missions. The solution to his problem was to use clones. However, he felt uncomfortable. So, he thought of using golems or robots. So, he asked Orochimaru to design a multi-purpose golem only for his squad. Orochimaru created this, asked Edward as he looked at it. He is indeed a talent if he has such an achievement in such a short time. However, his designs have too many flaws and manufacturing problems. The Empire has already designed a special golem for your squad. You can use it. Chapter 466 Departure After supervising Itachi's progress, Edward left to return to his lab. Most of the things he wanted to do in the Naruto world have been accomplished. Now, he only needs to wait for his ride to come pick him up. During the process, he continued his work on the ultimate magic body, Izanagi, and studied his rules. Meanwhile, he also supervised the automaton's work. He sent these robots on a warpath across the multiverse to plunder recklessly. Edward once thought of making a deal with the universe will. It will reveal the lost timelines the Lord God captured, and the latter would reward him with world source. However, he gave this idea for a few reasons. Firstly, he cannot deal with the majority of the void shield surrounding these timelines. And even if he did, it would be pointless. The universe will does not have the power to deal with these Lord Gods. Maybe in his universe, it would still be possible. However, even then, it would be catastrophic if he met a Lord God that was tier 11 and above. So, after giving up this idea, he sealed himself inside his laboratory. With the passage of time, the rejection he felt from the universe will drastically increase. Edward chose to counter this problem by creating a special enchantment that sealed himself inside his laboratory, away from the influence and power of the universe will. The only downside to this method is he was stuck inside and could not leave. He had to allow Morgana to set up the spell to capture this timeline. Edward has to admit this was the most complicated spell he has mastered. No. He can't even say he mastered it since he can learn plenty of things to this day. And every time he learns something new, he sighed at the vast distance between himself and Merlin. He knew the latter was vastly more powerful than him, but this spell was proof of this fact. Then, about four months later, his ride home arrived. A towering city appeared above the hidden leaf village, shocking all the ninjas. Although they had seen information about the floating city, it was an entirely different thing to see and experience it. I can't believe you created such a thing, commented Orochimaru from the lab. In the past few months, he dabbled in the artificer field and had some insight into the knowledge needed to create such a technical marvel. This is one of my greatest works, replied Edward with a smile. He combined the knowledge of several civilizations and the universe to create this masterpiece. However, there is room for improvement. He was never complacent, always pursuing improvement and advancement. Especially after hearing about the accomplishment of the Magus race, his empire has always been pursuing the steps of the Magus race, and Edward was confident it would not be long before he surpassed their achievements. However, after learning they had reached the peak of the void, he knew this was not such an easy task. Edward looked at Tsunade next to him and could detect she was nervous. So, he held her hands to reassure her, don't be nervous. I just don't know how to face your family. She worried about the complexity of joining an imperial harem. If the other woman does not like her and decides to oppress her with their power in the empire, she will have no way to resist, even with Edward's support. Our family is not as power-driven as you think. Most of them are researchers like me and would not even hold official positions if not for me asking he explained after guessing her worries. 
As for your personal relationship, they won't blame you, they'll blame me. His mouth twitched as he could guess the side eyes he would receive. Technically speaking, due to the short passage of time, he recently brought back Wiz, and now there was Tsunade. Despite how he felt, he still left the lab to receive the envoy. So, after arriving in the city, he only waited a few seconds before a white light flashed from the sky and someone appeared. Hermione, he said with a smile, are you okay? This was the first time Edward sent an emergency signal, so she hurried to this place. Luckily, he updated the engine of the city in his last voyage, allowing the city to instantly travel to its destination after knowing the coordinate. I'm fine, he replied. I encountered a terrifying creature in the void, and my city was almost destroyed. That's good, she sighed in relief. However, Hermione soon noticed the woman next to Edward. Given her proximity to him and the sign of nervousness displayed by her facial expressions, she had already guessed her status. Suddenly, she had the urge to bite him or bombard him with a few million fireball spells. Hello, my name is Hermione Granger. She did not blame Tsunade as she knew how charming and attractive her husband could be. Whether it is his personal power, his political and military power as an emperor, his knowledge that seemed infinite, or his brilliant mind, it is too attractive to many women. Tsunade, it's nice to meet you. Come on, let's have a chat over some tea, said Edward. We don't have time, countered Hermione. Only a week has passed since your departure. However, the war intensity has drastically increased. According to Olivier's order, I need to pick you up and return. The floating city is a strategic weapon and cannot be missing for long. Edward became serious, very well. He did not waste time and entered the Tier 9 floating city. The Tier 10 one had to stay home while the other Tier 9 was currently wreckage in the void. After entering, he connected to the city. He closed his eyes in ecstasy as he felt the vast amount of mana at the core. The sensation was truly something else. His first was to summon the automaton still in the multiverse. Once they all returned, he activated the spell to take away this timeline and all its people. Then, he activated the void engine and entered the void. His destination was not home, but the place where the Tier 9 floating city was. Edward saw a world of gray and white before returning to normal. The void has always fascinated him, wondering why it has color. The word void indicated nothing, so there should be no color. His theory is that this is how his brain and soul process something as complex or incomprehensible as the void. It used his inherent cognitive views and showed him something that he could understand and process. However, Edward understood that once he reaches a certain tier, most likely tier 12, he will see the void in a different manner. Not minding these distracting thoughts, he saw the picture before him and his heart ached. He saw a destroyed city surrounded by a shield. My baby. Although this floating city was not the one he personally created, it was still his baby. After all, he designed most of the things, and the resources used to create it are also his. It needs to be fixed as soon as possible, but we don't have the resources, said Hermione with a frown. The Empire almost ran out of resources building Edward's Tier 10 city. They had to plunder from the multiverse. However, this option was not available after their last warning. I have brought resources from the Naruto world, but it's probably enough to fix it to 70%. The Naruto universe is a middle-tier universe with a power cap of Tier 8. Meanwhile, the city is a peak Tier 9 artifact. And adding the difference between the two universes and power systems, the resources are also different. Do you have a good idea? asked Hermione. Chapter 467, Return and Hurry Edward pondered briefly, I can't think of two ways. The first is to use the mana grid. The mana grid grants the empire unlimited energy, which in turn equals unlimited resources. The mana from the grid can be turned into any or alloy or resources needed for the floating city through transfiguration or transmutation. Certain enchantments require to be fused with certain magical ores or potions to remain permanent. Otherwise, their effect will disappear after a few hours, weeks, months, or years. However, a tremendous amount of mana can be used instead of these resources, and the mana grid can provide such an intense need for energy. Unfortunately, 
we only recently accessed the grid and have little to no control. By using the knowledge he needed from the Akashic records, Edward managed to shut off the Milky Way section of the mana grid, thus stopping people from accessing the universe net. However, he has not concluded his research on the grid and how to properly use all this energy. If we have a little more time, this plan could work, added Hermione. However, the situation is changing at every moment. So, the sooner we fix the city, the better. The ideal situation would be to create a fourth one. Even if we use time dilation, it will take a few weeks to fix, added Edward. What about your second plan? Forceful plunder of world source. Hermione squinted her eyes as she instantly became serious. She understood what these words meant. We calculated the coordinates of a few planes during your absence, and one was Tier 9. We can use it. Very well. Edward wanted to take time to introduce Tsunade to his family and slowly get her acclimated to the Empire. Unfortunately, the war suddenly escalated in the short period he was gone. So, he no longer had the option to use the gentle method. Under his order, Morgana sent a beam that caught the destroyed floating city and stored it in one of the pocket dimensions in Hermione's floating city. Then, they returned home. As soon as he landed, he received a communication from Olivier. What's the situation? asked Edward. Hermione did not have time to inform him, and she wanted Olivier to do it since she better understood the current war. Guznad had reinforcement from the Abyss Plane, explained Olivier, with her usual commanding tone. These abyss demons are ruthless, feel no pain, are extremely powerful, and there are too many of them. We have suffered a lot of casualties in the past three days alone. Edward frowned as he looked at a hologram before him. The statistics showed that the casualties for the past three days were thrice that of the past six months of this war. These demons are so fierce? Yes, they have a high magic resistance. If our system were not capable of using multiple types of energy, the situation would have been even worse. Do they have any weaknesses? Light or positive type magic, replied Olivier. However, Guznad's people took this into account and blessed them with anti-light magic spells. What's your counter to this situation? Do you want to mobilize the clone legions? Not yet, replied Olivier. Her eyes turned red for a moment. A ruthless light flashed in her eyes. We will fire with fire. You also want to use abyss demons as troops? asked Hermione, who was next to Edward and listening to the conversation. Yes, from the information gathered, troops are the least valuable thing in the abyss plane. As long as we conquer one of the layers and become lord, we can control countless demons to fight Guznat. Edward groaned after hearing her plan. In general, this tactic is a great one. However, there is an issue after considering the overall implications. Olivier frowned as she knew what he meant. The gods of this universe do not allow the existence of any foreign plane to enter or exist in the cosmic god plane, and they have reasons for this caution. The cosmic god plane is one of the few, if not the only, plane with a multiverse, thus capable of giving birth to tier 11 entities. So, countless foreign planes are eyeing this place. So, if they knew the arcane empire had opened a gate to the abyss plane, the situation would have become more dangerous than it already is. The gods are already our enemy, argued Olivier. So, it's not an issue if they know about our action. It's not the same, countered Hermione. They can use this excuse to gather other gods to gang up on us. Moreover, they will now have the moral ground for a war against us. Olivier's frown deepened as she knew the importance of having the moral high ground. The gods can convince the neutral factions of the universe to ally with their sides. No need to hurry too much, added Edward with a sneer in his eyes. The people paying attention to the Milky Way will never use this excuse, at least, not until they have no choice. These gods are selfish, so after seeing the uniqueness of the Empire, they will not share with others. So, they will hide the information from the other factions. Benefit is above everything. So, since they believe they can control the empire by themselves, they won't say anything. However, we also need to be cautious, continued Edward with dangerous lights in his eyes. After the war, I will cast a galaxy-wide spell to erase information about the abyss plane from the mind of everyone who knows. That's a good way, nodded Olivier before continuing with her plan. 
If we want to conquer an abyss layer, we must kill a duke, tier 9. So, we need your floating city. Hermione, you also need to return to your post to ensure no problem. My city is in terrible shape currently, explained Edward before explaining to her the current situation. I'm glad you're all right, she said, glancing up and down at him. However, we need to deal with this situation as soon as possible. I'm on it, said Edward. Morgana, connect me to my city and send me the time staff. I, I, sir. A few seconds later, Edward felt he had a connection to a vast quantity of mana. He suddenly felt he could do anything with all this mana. He had regained control over his tier 10 floating city. The sensation is truly more pleasurable than any drug, he muttered under his breath. Then, a portal appeared before him as a staff floating before him. Without hesitation, he held it as he mobilized his willpower. He assessed the space-time authority of this world. Huh. The resistance was not as strong as I anticipated. The process of controlling the rules of this universe involved confronting Kronai for control with his willpower. However, the resistance he encountered was barely higher than his experience in the Naruto universe. And given how this universe is drastically more powerful than Harry Potter, it was odd. Could Kronai be helping me? But why? Edward shook his head and did not continue thinking about it. This was not the time for such a thing. Law spell. Time clone. Edward summoned a perfectly intact version of the Tier 9 floating city from the space-time continuum and summoned it as a clone and replacement for the current one. How long will it last? asked Hermione. Seven days, replied Edward. It should be enough, right? Yes. Who is going to the abyss? continued Edward. Only Hermione and Dumbledore are currently available. And since she's closer, let her go, added Olivier. Very well. Give me the coordinates to the Tier 9 plane you discovered. Edward received the coordinate while Hermione headed off. Meanwhile, while Edward was preparing, Olivier took this moment to talk to the quiet Tsunade. I'm sorry our first meeting was like this. However, the situation is a little chaotic. I understand. The name is Olivier Armstrong. Tsunade sends you. Once everything calms down, we will have more time to get to know each other. Olivier ended the conversation as Edward finished. Let's go. You're taking me with you? Yes. It's time you see some of the horrors of this world. You should prepare. Chapter 468 Cronai's Ambitions An empty and all-white room. A beautiful petite woman suddenly appeared. Her expression was cold and indifferent, devoid of any emotions. She looked in one direction, gazing in the direction of the Milky Way galaxy. A law magus, she muttered after sensing Edward accessing the space-time authority of this plane. After countless eons, another one finally showed up, muttered Cronai, the physical manifestation of the cosmic god plane's universe will. After so long, I finally saw the opportunity to rectify my mistake. During the rise of the Magus race, Cronai resisted their rule and supported the ancient gods. However, the ancient gods failed and became the experiment objects of the Magus race. As for her, she was also sealed and became the puppet of the Magus race for standing in their way. However, as the Magus race reached a certain level, Cronai did mind her situation as she could evolve. The Magus conquered countless planes, infused them with their central plane. And after absorbing enough world source, she raised her level from tier 10 to tier 11 and acquired a multiverse. At the peak of her power, Kronai was the greatest plane throughout the astral realm. Then, everything changed when the entire Magus civilization disappeared, leaving only a few things to show their existence. After their disappearance, Kronai regained her freedom. And, out of fear of the Magus race, she wished to prevent the existence of law magi that can forcefully control the plane's authority from her. So, she supported the existence of faith gods. These gods now had a contract-based relationship with her as she essentially lent them the control of certain authority. As such, no matter how powerful they became, the best outcome is that these gods were on par with her. They would never have the chance to surpass or seal her as the Magus did. Unfortunately, Cronai soon regretted this decision. The reign of the faith god drastically weakened the entire plane. They became parasites that prevented the development and growth of magic and technology. 
Kronai's goal of having a civilization as brilliant as the Magus race but also under her control became nothing but a dream. On the contrary, her plane's overall strength drastically declines, allowing places like the Titan Plane, Heavenly Dao Plane, Abyss Plane, Wizard Plane, Disaster Plane, and Alcabula Plane to catch up with her. Before the Magus era, these six planes were one of the most powerful planes in the astral realm. However, the Magus race conquered these planes, and they became a subsidiary of the Magus plane. Then, after their disappearance, things returned to their original state. Furthermore, these planes now have a deep hatred for the Magus race and wish nothing more than to conquer it to remove the past humiliation. Cronai knew if nothing was done, it was a matter of time before these places invaded. In truth, they have not done so because of their fear of the Magus race. Many ancient beings from these planes have survived since the rule of the Magus race. As such, they feared the latter was not really gone and were doing something. Only because of this fear can the current cosmic god plane remain safe and peaceful. However, as time passes and no news of the Magus race can be detected, many of these top planes have begun to be tempted, especially with the temptation to reach tier 11 and above. Kronai knew there might be some tier 11 powerhouses in these five planes. And these entities believed the Magus race found a way to reach tier 12, and they lust after such a secret. The faith gods are a failure as a civilization, thought Kronai. After so many years, only half-step tier 11 appeared, and he's not even one of them. She shook her head. After so many years, only a few tier 10 gods discovered the multiverse. However, they have yet to find a way to become tier 11. The answer to their problem is simply, communicate with others and explore the multiverse together. However, they are innately selfish, full of desires for control and power. The Magus race was an extremely cruel and brutal civilization. They invaded, conquered, exterminated, and experimented on all sentient beings in the astral realm. However, they were highly open-minded with their knowledge. They shared their discoveries and communicated with others to develop technology and disseminate knowledge. Just like the current arcane empire, thought Kronai. No, they are even better due to their inclusiveness. One of the weaknesses of the Magus race was their exclusiveness and pride in their race. All other races were beneath them, and the only way for other races to rise in the Magus society was to change their bloodline and become one of the Magus races. Using this method, they absorbed many talented geniuses from other races and ethnicities, turning them into members of the Magus race. This method has one fundamental flaw. It does develop the unique characteristics or strength of different races, analyzed Cronai. No matter how incredible the Magus race was, they were not perfect. Some races were born with abilities better than theirs, and even if the Magus could recreate these talents, it was not the same as natural talent. For example, elves had a natural affinity for magic, dwarfs were talented in forging, and humans developed rapidly and were very innovative and creative. After the Magus race assimilated the people from these races, they lost the opportunity to develop their individual talents. But the Arcane Empire is walking a different and better path, embracing all races, species, and ethnicities. Their development potential is on par with the Magus, if not better. Cronai squinted her cold eyes. I will have to rely on them to defend this plane from the invasion of these top planes. Furthermore, they are also my hope to return to my peak and even go further. According to Cronai's calculations, the Magus race turned into a tier 12 civilization, so they left the astral realm to develop and continue their journey of growth. Since the Magus can do it, I should also have this opportunity. If she could become a tier 12 plane, Cronai could not imagine how powerful she would be. Cronai is nothing but a will, a manifestation of the universe's consciousness to ensure the fundamental laws or rules of function properly. As such, she does not have any emotions. However, as a living entity, she has certain instincts, and the main one is to develop her universe and become as powerful as possible. So, after seeing the hope of becoming a tier 12 plane, she did not hesitate to place all her bets on the arcane empire. The arcane emperor has become a law magus. According to my analysis of him, it's only a matter of time before he makes this method public and more will appear in the empire. If I want to have a good relationship with them, 
I need to come to an understanding with him regarding the control of e-authority. I am all for more law magus to appear, but I also cannot allow them to become out of control. Back then, even the magus race had a problem with too many law beings in their civilization. I can work with the emperor to design a test for the individual who reaches the standard. Kronai remembered the heavenly Tao plane with many mages called cultivators. Their universe will use as a similar system. Yes, the emperor seems reasonable, so I should be able to convince him. However, it's too early since he's now the only one. The main issue facing the empire next should be the soul limit. If he doesn't deal with it, everything will be in vain. Soul limit was something the ancient gods placed in all races in the universe to prevent anyone from overthrowing their rules. Back then, Kronai relied on them to stabilize the laws of the universe so they could modify them as they wished. Should I help them? No, I cannot blatantly intervene in their development. Kronai has certain rules, regulations, and restrictions she has to follow. So, she cannot give Edward the answer to this problem. The dragon race, elves, and magus race succeeded in breaking the limit, so he should be fine. There are many ways to break the limit of the soul and allow someone to become tier 10. However, only these three races broke the limit by creating a universal method applicable to their entire race. So, she hoped the Arcane Empire would become the fourth. Chapter 469, New Plane The Empire currently has three floating cities. One was destroyed, while the remaining two were in different places on the border, serving as a deterrent for the war. However, Edward's Tier 10 floating city was never revealed to be this powerful as they wanted to use it as a final trump card against Guznat. As such, even if it appeared, it always masquerades as a Tier 9 weapon. Now that he had to conquer a Tier 9 plane, he needed to use the Tier 10 floating city to ensure things proceeded as smoothly and swiftly as possible. So, he replaced it with the time clone he created using his time staff. Then, he boarded the city with the destroyed one inside heading toward the coordinate. Oh, baby, how I missed you, said Edward, caressing one of the walls of the city. He was not even embarrassed despite the strange look Tsunade was giving him. Don't you have any shame? she asked. This thing is indeed my baby, replied Edward. I spent hundreds of years creating and enchanting it. The resources used in this thing are enough to buy at least hundreds of timelines from your universe. Furthermore, this thing is the crystallization of all my knowledge and ability as an artificer. He then sneered while showing a proud look. In this entire universe, the number of people that can understand the complexity of this invention and are able to create one with the blueprint is probably no more than a few dozen. But, the number of people that can create it from scratch, well, I won't be arrogant and say there is none. But, what does that have to do with how you were acting? asked Tsunade in bewilderment. Nothing. I just wanted to brag and show you how awesome I am. She was speechless. I knew you were a narcissist, but I didn't know it was to this level. It's not narcissism when you have the capital to brag, replied Edward, and Swanda just shook her head. Master, we've arrived, suddenly said Morgana, who suddenly appeared. Is that so? Show me a visual. A screen manifested before him, showing something similar to a large egg. As he looked at this plane, he knew the terrible fate that was about to befall it. Master, what's the attack plan? Do you want to just blast its protective wall? We still need to be cautious. Although this place's power ceiling was only tier 9 and could not survive one attack from the city's cannon, Edward always did things with caution in mind. Activate the stealth system and infiltrate this place. Let's see if the universe will can detect us. Morgana executed the order as the city turned invisible before bypassing the plane's protective measure. The screen before Edward became all black before changing to a vast sky. In the corner of his eyes, he saw a city full of lives. How is it? he asked. The operation was partially successful, replied the little elf. Oh, what happened? The universe will did detect our arrival but did not find our exact location. According to my detection, many authorities are being used to find our location. Can you calculate how long we can remain hiding? 3 hours, 34 minutes, and 12 seconds. Such a short time? Technically speaking, the city was of much higher energy level than this plane and the universe will. So, it should not be a problem to hide from it. 
The universe will has control of all e authority of this plane, and it's using them to find our location. In this brief conversation, I've detected more than 300 methods of divination. Interesting, muttered Edward. Three hours is more than enough to accomplish our tasks. However, this is a great opportunity to gather as much data on the universe will as possible. Sir, what is the plan of action? asked Morgana. Do you want to fight the authority? With authority? Yes. Coat the city in a bubble made of space-time and curse rules. Let's see how long it will take for it to find us. Sir, I'm unable to execute the order. Huh? What is the issue? The time staff can be used as a medium for the space-time bubble. But we have nothing for the curse rules. Oh, how could I forget that? The time staff was made using the space-time rules of the full Metal Alchemist universe, allowing Edward to use them everywhere and anytime. However, his curse rules have to rely on the environment. To use it, he has to use his willpower to overwhelm this plane's universe will and control the curse authority. However, in the current situation where he is trying to hide from the universe will, his intervention in this plane's authority will only alert others of his whereabouts. Legendary arcanists are not limited by any universe and can control the authority in any universe. However, they are powerless in places with no authority, like the void, or when in a situation like this one. So, I guess the path of higher tiers is for the body to generate its own authority. Arcanists have to become the source of their authority instead of relying on any universe or foreign aid. We didn't bring the death staff, right? No, Her Highness Bellatrix still has it. I see. All right, only use the space time bubble. Furthermore, Take this opportunity to record all the data possible on the universe will use authority. As you wish. But how long is the observation? Don't forget, we are on a tight schedule. 24 hours. We can still waste one day with no issue. In the meanwhile, scan this plane and gather as much information as possible. In the meantime, I will prepare to fix City 3. What about me? What am I supposed to do? Asked Tsunade. Ever since she came here. She felt restrained for some reason. Although she knew it was because she needed to adapt, it was still uncomfortable. You can come with me or rest. I'll take a break. Tsunade felt she needed some time alone. That's good, nodded Edward. You can take your time and slowly adapt to this new life. Although things are a little hectic, you do not need to worry. I will. Edward teleported to the location of the destroyed city. Morgana had already run many diagnostics on the damage. So he accessed the data to choose the best method to fix this thing. Huh, suddenly muttered Edward as he noticed something that caught his attention from the data. Time reversal. A green magical magic circle enveloped the entire floating city, summoning the power of time and reversing the floating city to a state before it was destroyed. However, nothing happened. It was as if the spell had failed or had no effect. Could it be that the passage of time in the void was drastically different from the Naruto universe? Thought Edward. If that were true, he might need to rewind time hundreds, thousands, and even millions of years backward before returning it to its former state. No, something is odd. Edward has high achievement in the time magic, and his senses are sharper, so he notices something odd. To test his doubt, he cast a few more time spells, and the effect was the same. What is going on? One of the plans he had to fix the city was to use World Source to power a time spell and return this artifact to the state before its destruction. However, this method has proven to be futile. Edward would normally not care since he had other methods. However, he also wanted to know the reason for this odd phenomenon. And his mind won't rest until he at least has a decent working theory. Could it be the result of residual void energy? Edward frowned before doing a few more tests on this basis. Unfortunately, the result was the same. So, his brain began to work on overdrive, thinking of a solution. After a few hours, his eyes lit up. Could it be? Chapter 470 Beast Master After making a bold assumption or conjecture, Edward immediately began to test it. He first connected to the ether core of the Tier 10 floating city. Subsequently, he entered the mana sage mode to elevate his senses to the highest possible level. With his enhanced strength and senses, Edward cast numerous detection spells, 
including the new ones he created from the Naruto universe based on the Sharingan, Byakugan, Rinnegan, and Tensigan. He also used Morgana's computing power to the limit. He also gave the order to prioritize his experiment over dealing with this plane's universe will. With all these methods, he finally discovered the source of the anomaly of City 3. Is this essence of entities higher tier 12 and above? Asked Morgana with confusion, awe, fear, and desire. Probably, replied Edward, who exhaled deeply. He also felt a lot of complicated emotions. The cause of the city's anomaly is the enormous creature that destroyed it. The creature's essence seemed to have transcended time and space, transcending causality. In other words, it was a higher dimensional creature. As such, his attack, no, his random movement, can be reversed by time. At the very least, Edward's level of time magic cannot affect this creature's power. The scary thing about this power is that it's passive. The creature naturally has such an effect without any spells or techniques. We truly have a long way to go, muttered Morgana. Yes, nodded Edward. And one day, we will reach such a level and beyond. Edward labeled the information he just received as the highest security level of the Empire before proceeding with the task at hand. Fixing the city will still use the same method, but he had to change a few things around. He will still use World Source as a source of energy. However, he will not place time reversal enchantment on the city, but activate its self-repair enchantment. World Source is a magical energy or power with many capabilities. As such, the floating city can repair quickly after using it as an energy source for the enchantment. So, Edward began to place the necessary enchantments. The process took him a few hours. By the time he finished, the 24 hours he had given Morgana, only less than 5 hours remaining. He wanted to spend this time flirting with Tsunade, but she was still resting. So, he used the remaining time to read a few books. How do you feel? Much better, replied Tsunade, who used the deep sleep chamber last night to properly sleep and rest. That's good, nodded Edward. Morgana, how are things on your side? I have gathered a lot of data, but it's not nearly enough, she replied while shaking her head. The field of e-authority is unlike any knowledge the Empire has come in contact with. It's fine. I already decided to use this plane as our experiment ground, replied Edward, his tone calm but containing a bone-chilling coldness. What, what about the people of this world? asked Swanda after hesitating for a moment. They will be fine. Edward had no intention of causing a mindless slaughter, especially with no purpose or gain. However, his actions will cause the inhabitants of this plane to lose their homes. What information have you gathered on this plane? he asked. As soon as he uttered these words, a few holograms floated before him while Morgana explained. This world is habited by two races, humans and magical beasts, said the little elf. These two races have been fighting for millions of years, and humans are currently dominating. The human population is as diverse as the empire, with people of all ethnicities. Their culture is similar to medieval times, and their technology is roughly on the same level. What about their power system? asked Edward. It's called Beast Master. A taming profession? No, a fusion profession. Humans hunt down magical beasts and fuse with them, acquiring their physical prowess and magical abilities. If that's the case, this plain civilization should have a deep understanding of the life code, bloodline, and even soul fusion, commented Edward. You would think so, but no. Morgana shook her head. Their entire power system relied on relics from a past civilization. They used magical circles, potions, and luck to fuse with magical beasts. The success rate is abysmally low. Edward frowned as he reviewed the information on the screen. He saw the process of someone fusing with a Tier 5 beast. The most prominent faction of this plane is called the Beast Association, which provides people with potions and magical circles for fusion. Edward saw someone attempt fusion. However, the latter lost his mind and turned into a raging monster instead. With his knowledge, he could tell the beasts will overwhelm the Beast Master, resulting in his failure. Furthermore, their bloodline and soul were not compatible. The person in charge of the process remained indifferent to the person's death. It was as if he had seen too much failure or death. Edward watched another attempt. And this time, 
It was a well-dressed young man. This time, the process succeeded, and Edward also knew why. The aristocrat of this world controlled meditation techniques that could increase their soul power, making it easier for them to overwhelm the beast's soul during fusion. Furthermore, they have some knowledge of bloodline and know what type of beasts are more compatible with their descendants. Do you have information on why this world is like this? Yes, replied Morgana. From what I gathered, this plane used to belong to the wizard plane. It was one of their posts for bloodline experiments. But, for some reason, they disappeared, abandoning this plane. Meanwhile, the habitants of this plane found their research and created this new power system. So, the inheritance they received was flawed or incomplete. Adding the fact that the aristocrats and wealthy control knowledge, they never truly develop a proper civilization and have to rely on the remains from the wizard plane. That's the best way to summarize it, nodded Morgana. M. Do we have any information on this wizard plane? From the information we received from the Starskin race, there are six planes considered the most powerful in the astral plane. The Titan plane, the Disaster plane, the Wizard plane, the Heavenly Tao plane, the Abyss plane, and the Alcabula plane. The Wizard plane, muttered Edward. What about us? We are also considered the top, but apparently everybody hates us. Considering what the Magus did, it's understandable, groaned Edward. This plane might be more valuable than we expected if we can find the coordinate to the wizard plane. I would like to remind you that the wizard plane might have a tier 11 wizard and more than one. So, be cautious. I'm aware. But since they are destined to be our enemies, it's a good thing to learn of their whereabouts. It would be even better if we could secretly infiltrate their ranks. True. We can gather the relics of the wizard plane and use them to cast karma spell to detect their plane coordinate. The only issue is whether our attempt would be detected. The chances of being detected are very high, according to my calculations, said Morgana. There are too many risks, so I recommend we don't do this. Edward frowned, thinking whether there was a solution. There is an easier way, suddenly said Tsunade, drawing attention to her. Oh, do you have an idea? Such a powerful world will not worry about plane invasion since they are the invaders. As such, they won't spend much time trying to hide their world's coordinates. As long as we look around, for example, the abyss plane you previously mentioned, we might find the coordinates of all these six planes. She might be right, commented Morgana. These top planes should have dealt with each other for many years, so they likely knew each other's coordinates. As for other planes, maybe they needed to hide when the Magus race was in power. But now, who dares to invade them? Send a message to Hermione and ask her if she can find the coordinates of these worlds.